This is going to be quite an interesting bite of knowledge because I'm going to share some things that hardly anyone shares. Companies don't share this. Uh, I hope I don't get in trouble for this. I'm sure I won't. But uh, influencers don't share this. And But I just thought I wanted to share the behind the scenes of what really goes into developing and creating a product like Bethany's Pantry or a protein powder or any product. It's not just my products, but any protein bar or any kind of anything you see on the shelf, yogurt, whatever it is, because I get asked a lot like, when are you coming out with this? Or why did it take two years to develop that and all these things? And so I, I wanted to kind of give you guys just a little tidbit and details of what it really takes to develop a product because you probably will be very surprised as to why it takes so long, the R&D that goes into it, the money, everything. So uh, I hope this is helpful and insightful and I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy it. I really just thought it would be quite fun to share. So in case you guys didn't know, you're listening to the Digest This Podcast and I'm your host, Bethany Cameron. Let's get right into it. If you guys haven't heard, I just came out with a strawberry flavor to add to my Bethany's Pantry protein powder line. This newest flavor delivers such a robust strawberry flavor without any natural flavorings or artificial sweeteners. And the natural pink color is created by using 100% pure beet and strawberry powder. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but it's actually not required by law that you don't have to list sub ingredients in a single ingredient. So many freeze-dried and dehydrated fruit powders actually contain a carrier such as a maltodextrin or dextrose, which are sugars. And companies add this ingredient to prevent clumping of the powder and keep it, quote, free-flowing. But for me, I know better and I seek out only the best, purest form of ingredients to add to my Bethany's Pantry products, including our digestive support strawberry flavor. I'm reading through reviews right now and Gina E gave it five stars and wrote, this is the best protein powder I have ever tasted. I will definitely be buying again. Thank you. And Nancy S wrote, Strawberry is the best flavor of all three flavors. And she also rated and reviewed and gave it five stars. And Jennifer C wrote, only protein powder that doesn't bother my stomach. I can't live without it. So you can see my protein powder is loved and appreciated by so many. And it's vegan, paleo, keto friendly, as well as suitable for those on a candida or diabetic lifestyle. It's also glyphosate free and contains no gluten, grains, or lectins. Yes, that's right, you guys. We actually remove the lectins from the peas, which is why countless customers message me on Instagram saying after trying other pea protein powders, this is the only one they can actually digest without any issues. You see, it's not only the taste, but the purity and the way we process it without any chemicals that makes it so special and different. So if you're ready to start your journey to a healthier and happier gut and ultimately happier life, head on over to newzest-usa.com slash Bethany's Pantry to grab a tub of the strawberry protein and check out all of the other Bethany's Pantry gut-friendly goodies. Again, that's N-U-Z-E-S-T dash USA dot com slash Bethany's Pantry to see my entire line of products. You guys are going to love them and your gut will too. Newzest dash USA dot com slash Bethany's Pantry. If you've ever wondered about the non-toxic air fryers, shampoos and conditioners, organic undies, and new food products on the market, and even some not available to the public yet, and well, you want to get the inside scoop, then you need to join the 20,000 plus people that are already receiving these updates via my Friday Finds newsletter. I share information that only my subscribers get in their inbox, stuff like non-toxic kitchen appliances, new food finds, product recalls, food news, and even personal care products we all should or should not be using. 
My Friday Finds newsletter goes out once a week every Friday and has quickly become some of my followers' favorite things to open in their inbox. I've even started to include a recipe in this once a week newsletter. This is not published anywhere else and cannot be found on my blog. So if you're not part of the over 20,000 people that are in the know, be sure you're not left out by going to littlesipper.com slash subscribe and enter your email. That's it. It's free. There's no spam. Just helpful, insightful content full of goods, literally. So pause this episode and go to L-I-L-S-I-P-P-E-R dot com slash subscribe. That's L-I-L-S-I-P-P-E-R dot com slash subscribe. Okay, so first of all, this is not just talking about my products. I am going to use Bethany's Pantry as an example because obviously that's my specialty. That's what I have experienced. But this goes for any product you see on the shelf, cereal, you name it, right? First, when you want to develop a product, obviously you need an idea. Why do you want to develop this product? Is there a need? Do you see a need? And for me, when I was creating the protein powder back in 2018, uh, I thought there's a need for this. There's no other protein powder on the market that is for those with digestive issues. There's no other protein powder without stevia or monk fruit or natural flavors or gums or thickeners and all those different things. And so I was already working with Newsest at the time, just being an affiliate. And I approached them and I said, look, I have this idea. Trust me, just run with it. And they're just such an amazing company that they did and they trusted me. So anyways, they were like, okay, let's try it out. Let's do a test run. Let's do like a limited release. It sold out so fast. The response was amazing. Obviously, if you guys have been following me since 2018, they, I mean, we sold out, excuse me, and we kept it as a permanent product. So all that to say is now we have an entire line of not just protein powders, but I saw a need for it. So if you're looking to develop a product or if you see a product on the shelf, hopefully they see a need and hopefully their intentions were right and not just trying to make a buck. That was not my intention at all. I wanted to create something for my followers as well as for myself that I could digest without any issues from you know, obviously all the additives and fake sweeteners, et cetera. So I am developing products because I see a need for it and there's no other product on the market. There may be similar products, but there's no other product that is the same. And so that is the first step in creating one. Now you have to do some research, just like knowing, hey, is there a product on the market like this? It's a tricky situation because if they're, if you're going into a different category, like if you're creating a different category, then that could actually be a negative effect. Like that could be a downside because if you're creating an entire new category, I'm just trying to think of, oh, I don't know, corn-based yogurt. I don't, that, that was just random, but there's no other corn yogurt out there, obviously. So that's a little tricky in creating something that nobody else is doing. However, protein powder, there's already protein powders out there. So maybe that was a bad example with the corn, but (laughs) you get what I'm saying. So if there's nothing else on the market and you're trying to like create a new category, that is very tricky. Obviously, again, there was protein powder on the market. If you're wanting to create a cereal, obviously there's already cereal on the market. So that is not something to worry about. So all that to say. Now, Finding a co-packer. This is something you may not realize or know about companies is that most companies do not pack the products themselves. They hire a, what's they're called a co-packer. And it's a company that they co-pack for several different companies. So for example, protein powder, we have a co-packer. They co-pack for all sorts of other protein powder companies, not just us. So 
they're creating and co-packing for all these different brands that come to them and hire them to co-pack because they have the machines which cost hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. Most companies just don't have extra money to just spend $500,000, like half a million on this machine. So they hire a co-packer, which is a lot cheaper than half a million, and they pack the products for them. And so obviously we go to the co-packer. First, we have to find one. If you're already in the business, you typically do already have one. And we say, hey, look, this is our formulation. This is what we want. These are the ingredients and we need you to pack it. And so that's what they do. So they don't, you know, create anything. They follow our instructions on everything that we um, that we tell them to do. Now, speaking of ingredients, we ha- as a company we have to source the ingredients. So, for I'm just going to use my protein powder as an example. So for the cacao protein powder, we have to source the cacao powder. And so we go out, we look for different suppliers. And we have to we have to get the quotes. We have to look at the sourcing. News S, thankfully, they they have a team. They do that, but then they come back to me because I am the final say. And I'm like, no, yes, let's go. They ask me what I want in the protein powder or in the product, and then I say, look, this is what I want. These are the ingredients. I want them sourced from certain places because there are a lot of ingredients that I personally do not want sourced from certain countries. I want to not dip my toes into those countries. And so they have to go and find ingredients that are sourced from like ingredient suppliers that are sourced with integrity, first of all. I will also say that the the base of the, the pea protein powder, it is not sourced in the USA. There are certain ingredients that I prefer are sourced from the USA. And there are certain ingredients I prefer that are not sourced in the USA. Pea protein is one of them. Pea protein, if it's in the USA, it's most likely sprayed with glyphosate. Now, we source our pea protein from Europe, which I prefer over the USA. And here's why. Europe has stricter standards. They do not spray glyphosate. In in fact, it's illegal to spray crops uh, with glyphosate in Europe. So there's not even a chance of glyphosate runoff from nearby crops. And their standards are literally so strict that we don't even need organic certification technically because their certification for pea protein is literally like the USDA organic qualifications, if that makes sense. So it's a whole nother ball game in Europe. And that's why, again, sourcing is so important and makes a huge difference in whatever product you're consuming. It's not just like, oh, well, it's the same ingredients. No, but the sourcing is completely different and the way that it is processed. So we also want to make sure that we don't have lectins in our pea protein, which all pea protein is not the same. Most of them do contain lectins. We remove the lectins from our pea protein. So That's a whole nother topic that I'm not even going to go into. But all that to say is sourcing of the ingredients, sourcing the cacao powder, making sure we do the testing, lead testing, heavy metal testing. We want to source the coconut sugar that we're we're using. Where is it coming from? And then we have to get all these different quotes from companies. And sometimes there's three coconut sugars that are fine. I like them all. And then it comes down to price. Okay, well, who's going to give us the cheaper price? Because in the end, price does matter because that will overflow to the consumer. That will trickle down to the consumer. And we want to give the consumer the best affordable price possible. So when people are giving negative comments of, oh, why is it so expensive for this box of cereal? Or why is it so expensive for this yogurt or whatever? It's because a lot of times these companies, they have to pay for the ingredients. They have to pay all these other people involved, the co-packers, like I said, the ingredient suppliers. And not going for the cheapest product will create a more expensive product for the end user in the end. So it's all up to you. Now, again, really cheap products that you can buy at the grocery store, they're using cheap ingredients. Natural flavors, 
very, very cheap, very cheap. And that's why so many companies use them instead of real vanilla beans, for example. Like our vanilla protein powder, the digestive line at least, not the the um, the regular new zest, but the digestive line, Bethany's Pantry. We do not use natural flavors. And I wanted to use real vanilla beans. Now, again, real vanilla, you guys know it's an expensive product. And I did not want to cut corners. And again, a lot of other protein powder companies use natural flavors. And it's a lot cheaper to use vanilla flavoring versus a real vanilla bean. So all that to say, we have to source the vanilla beans. We source everything, the L-glutamine, we do the, the sourcing the probiotics. Now, all again, this is when you're developing a new product. And thankfully now we have our suppliers and uh, we have relationships with them. But in creating something new, like I did mention, I gave, if you guys saw my stories maybe like a month ago, I did mention that I was coming out with some new products. One of them was going to be a greens powder. Now this is a greens powder that I am wanting to create for those with digestive issues because obviously greens are not very digestive friendly for the most part. So I'm creating something that is. And in that, we don't have a current greens powder. So all this research, creating something takes a long time to source again. So it's almost like we're starting from scratch. There's other products that we're coming out with, which I can't really say yet, but all that to say, it is taking a while to do all these things. And and that's just sourcing and and finding things. Now we're going into the R&D. Let's just say we have all the ingredients. We have the ingredients to make the protein powder. And now we're going into R&D. Now we're thinking, okay, well, well, how much cacao powder versus coconut sugar versus pea protein should we combine together? How is it going to taste? Because there's so many different variations with the same ingredient. You can have all same ingredients and 10 different variations and it will all taste different. We can have more coconut sugar, less coconut sugar, more cacao powder, less cacao powder. And all the ratios are just different. And so the R&D for that can take, it's typically about $10,000 just for R&D. And maybe you won't even use it. And you have you just spent $10,000? I mean, there's so much money that goes into it. And this can take up to six months. And six months just for R&D is a long time. And that's why, again, it can take a long time to create one product. Then there's the testing of the product once once it is actually formulated and they New Zest sends it to me. There's so many back and forths with New, with New Zest, uh, me and them. I mean, I am approving every single ingredient. I'm disapproving ingredients. I'm testing. They're sending me things to test during the R&D process again, which is like six plus months sometimes. The strawberry protein powder that we have now available, that took two years. And it was just insane. Some of the suppliers, they dropped out. I mean, I'm not even going to go into it, but and we had to find new ones. Again, the testing and tasting, we had so many different formulations. That was probably the hardest just to get it right because I didn't want to use colors, you know, and I wanted to taste like strawberry without using strawberry flavor. And that is very, very tricky. All that to say is the R&D process takes, oh, at least six months, typically longer. Uh, now, then there's the label design. <laughs> there, this, then we're not even talking about the product. We're just talking about the, the package now. We have to des- design the labels, the photos, the description, the nutritionals, which we have to send the nutritionals to a lab and they create them, um, making sure that they are, you know, in fact, correct testing. We can't just say, um, we're going to like put, you know, uh, 20 grams of protein in this protein. And well, how do we know if there's really 20 grams or 17 grams? So we have to send it and to a um, specialist and they actually um, and test it and then, you know, make sure that it is all correct. Again, this is for every product. Again, cereal, flour, I mean, what you think about it. So they have to do this too. And, and that takes money, obviously. Um, and then the website integration and design. So let's just say you've done all your due diligence. Then there's the website creation, which isn't just taking a week. Typically it takes a while because there's so many links and clicks that you have to create and make sure that the links 
are going to the correct areas. You have to um, put the design up there. There's so many things that I am still unaware of because that is not my my expertise is the design of websites. But all that to say is just, I know this from working with New Zest. It takes a very long time to integrate that for the launch and for people to easily access the product. Because obviously you don't want to just bring out a product without making sure that it is easily accessed and people can actually get it. And then that's just if you're selling online. If you are selling into grocery stores, like we we do sell in grocery stores now, we're in, you know, actually we're in iHerb, which is an online grocery store, it's worldwide. But what's the other one? Oh, H-E-B, we're in H-E-B and we're in other smaller retailers too, Mother's Markets, et cetera. But then you have to send it into the, um, what's it called? The distributor, they get it from the distributor. If you are selling, again, like an online source, we're also on Amazon, so you have to send it to the Amazon packing facility. I mean, it's so much, all this to say, it takes a very long time to create a product. So when, I mean, I'm literally like sitting on the edge of my seat right now because there's so many products in the making for Bethany's Pantry that I cannot wait to bring out, but we are definitely in the nitty gritty of it. And I just thought I would share because it is a very long process. It's not just, ooh, I think I want to create something. And then a month later, you have it. So anyways, I thought I would share not just for about New Zest or Bethany's Pantry, but just for all the products out there. Make sure that you are grateful and thankful for the products that you use and love. And hopefully whatever product you are using, they have come out with it with integrity and with a willingness to really help people and not just make a buck. That was my first priority. And that is still my priority is to coming out with products that can really help people and that there's no other product on the market. And I'm really wanting to be the first to really bring it into that special uh, category because I'm not seeing any other any other place for it. So anyways, thanks for listening. And if you have enjoyed this episode or any of the episodes, I always encourage my listeners to give this a five-star rating and review. It really helps the show. And if you do have any questions about Bethany's Pantry in general, I'll leave a link in the description of this show so you can easily access them. Take a look at the ingredients um, and compare them with the regular News S line because they are different. So you can do that comparison yourself by comparing the ingredients. And uh, you can go to Bethany pantry.com and you can access uh, all those uh, products there. Thanks guys. Thanks for listening to this episode of Digest This. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a review in your podcast app to let us know. If you're ever wondering how you can support me and this podcast, sharing it with your friends and family is the best way. This is a resonant media production produced by Drake Peterson and edited by Mike Fry. To email the show, message us at digestthispod at gmail.com. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team first.